Happy Monday, everybody! You're listening to the Personal Playlist Podcast, fondly referred to as the P3. I'm Noah Daniel. I am so excited to have Sarah Candela here on the Personal Playlist Podcast. Sarah taught high school English and journalism in New York for 14 years before moving to California three years ago to pursue interests in various aspects of podcasting and writing, among other explorations. Part of the journey always included a search for ways to still work with teachers and students, or at least serve them in some way. So to bridge her old teaching life and her new one, Sarah started the podcast From Bell to Bell a show about school in which she invited teachers to choose a film that takes place in a school setting and talk about what it says about public education or kids. After learning how to launch, produce, and manage many podcasting clients at once and getting to know the podcasting world of Los Angeles pretty well, Sarah somehow became connected with Swivel and slowly made a transition to working on a podcasting tool they were developing for the classroom called Synth. Now she serves as a marketing manager for Swivel, which includes Synth, and Skilled Space, and co-host The Doc with Stephen Hurley on Saturday nights on Voice Ed Radio. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you for having me, Noah. I'm so excited. I am so excited. I listen to The Doc. I have been part of conversations to weigh in on song suggestions for The Doc, but tell me, tell me a little bit about how you and Stephen came to develop the show. Well, I actually was not originally in the development of the doc. I picked up with Stephen. um, I think we uh, we just celebrated our one year anniversary of the doc together in December. Happy podcast anniversary! (laughs) And he, I think it has been. I think it was two years or so, maybe a year and a half or two years that he did it before I uh, joined. And that that all all of it comes together almost everything that I've done in the last three years kind of comes together under the umbrella of the audio space, I would say, because Stephen and I met through me inviting him on my podcast and then him saying, hey, you should come talk to me about about radio. And we had this love of radio and like traditional, like classic, like idea of people gathering around the radio um, and and like as a family or or as a group and, and having a shared experience that doesn't include any distraction. And um, we bonded over that immediately. And, and he kept asking me for a while to uh, come and join him as a guest. And then I just never left um, after <laughs> December of 2019. Um, and then it just developed from there. And we've kind of deepened the show from just um, a place to gather and talk about and listen to music on a Saturday night to a place where we really connected to, I mean, I think it was really important that we started this in, in really in 2020 because it became connected to everything that was going on in our lives. Uh, And so we actually just reflected on that this past Saturday about how the doc was a rhythm in our lives and in a lot of people's lives throughout this past year. And uh, that that kind of just solidifies the importance of spaces like like the doc and voice ed radio and audio. Yeah, and it's interesting too teaching in the virtual school this year, like really appreciating the sound of a voice. I think it was it was started because of my work at Voice Ed Radio and because of my shows. But it is a, a holy space to be able to sit and listen and absorb. And it's even cooler to be able to do it as a shared experience as a listener and as a creator. So I know that there's so much that goes into each show, but there's a lot of synergies that happen while you guys are talking that you don't prepare for. And it just kind of evolves from there. Yeah. And there's a lot of connections that have made, and and I I think I started getting really emotional about thinking about the last uh, show that we did last Saturday for the last show, or actually the first show of this year. Um, But really thinking over the last year, as disconnected as people, you know, as as the media likes to make it feel like this year was so disconnected, a, a lot of what we felt was like, this was a year of connecting. And a lot of that had to do with having to go out of your way to, to think about how, how we can make, like, make deep relation or foster deep relationships with people when you cannot be in the same space. 
Um, and audio is something that always has been a love of mine and listening deeply, especially with good headphones on to anything from music to podcasts to books to, I mean, just for something, it just feels like the person or, or people are, are within you and, and, and it's easy to connect that way. And, and so that just comes naturally to me when I think of, of how do you connect with people when you can't physically be there? Um, and so, yeah, the radio. It must be extra special though, then that you're working at Swivel because you're doing things that you're passionate about and you came to it almost organically in the same way that you're talking about radio. Yes. And it's, it's, it's funny because my, um, you know, I had a very, I guess, planned life right out of uh, high school and college. And I always knew I wanted to be a teacher and I did exactly, exactly that. And I knew I wanted to teach English and I wanted to do something where I could read and talk to people about reading and writing all the time. And that was my gateway into that. But then, um, you know, the creative part of me was really aching to be able to explore that more. And so, and so leaving teaching, although I did not really want to necessarily not be involved in education. I just wanted to, space to explore what else I could do um, and what I was capable of. So not knowing really what that was, uh, audio was really my way into that. So exploring podcasting and um, eventually meeting through a podcasting connection, actually, um, Brian Lamb, who is the founder of Swivel, um, which is an ed tech company. I don't know if I, who knows how many people know of Swivel in this audience, but um, yeah, so I connected with him and he was looking for someone with education background, but also an interest in uh, learning about the broadening podcasting horizon with him and helping him navigate the, those two worlds. And I was like, me, me over here. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you just wrote my bio. <laughs> um, so I just started with answering an email and um, that led me on a journey to now I'm like managing marketing for Swivel and and its other products that are in development. Um, and and really, yeah, we're in the middle of a crazy transition because our, we've ex like exploded because of the um, because of the pandemic and it, it's really, yes, another moment of synergy and serendipity where lots of things are falling down and being rebuilt and like we feel like we're in the middle of that um, and and our, our mission that we're rewriting and rebranding for this year is so exciting and I cannot wait um, for the world to see what we are planning to try and uh, and do with with schools and with the education space. It's a very exciting place to be right now. Okay, well, we'll make sure to tune into that. And I'll send out any links to information about that, because I'm always interested in what's on the horizon. But you also have other things on the horizon, because you and I were talking before the show about your podcast. And I think it's such an interesting idea to watch a movie and talk about the film and what it says about school. And yet you were saying that there's other stuff in the works, even though you're not working on that right now. So what's happening? So yeah, so I the podcast that I had started was um, really to, to I guess I didn't know, I always tell people when I left school, like teaching, I didn't know how to talk to anybody but teachers, <laughs> which is so true. It's still true because I spend half of my days talking to teachers still. And now I'm, you know, have a show on voice ed radio. So um, yeah, so I, I was like, I, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know how to talk to anybody else. So I, I that was part of the plan was really just to to, to meet other people to talk about, even though I wasn't in school, I mean, to talk to, even though I wasn't in schools anymore. So talking about that in a more talking about education in a in a way that you could kind of make a put a fun spin on it where we where we have we you know I would give people the choice to pick a film that takes place in a school and we would talk about like you know something like the movie Clueless and uh, which was one of my favorite episodes and talk about why you know how ridiculous things are or how true things are to life um, and how how film and media really shapes the outlook of a uh, of how, you know, people who have never been in a school as an adult really think about teenagers and, and, and school. Um, and it is interesting, but now 
I'm starting to think about developing something a little bit more true to my personal taste and what I would like to do. Um, and it, it's going to have to do with something in reading and connecting teachers with, um, still going to be teachers, but connecting teachers with uh, the books that they, that they loved when they were young. I hmm. think that that's the road that I'm going down right now. <laughs> so a narrative about narrative. I love kind it. Of. Um, I'm very, very meta. I think, I think that that's really cool. And I think that for me, you know, when I hear you say something like that or thinking about movies as a catalyst or books as a catalyst, that's a, that's a, a good connection to what this is. Cause in, on this show, music is the catalyst, but really it's about you and it's about your story. And I asked you to choose a nostalgic an identity and a pick me up song. Tell me a little bit about how you handled that. How did it feel to, <laughs> to gather those things? Well, as before podcasts became my main listening uh, or audio activity, um, I uh, music was a huge part of my life, um, especially my my 20s and my teens, uh, which it is for a lot of people. But, uh, you know, I couldn't get enough of, of anything that I, anything that I could listen to or attend or see. And I was interested in learning about every instrument and collecting magazines. And so, so thinking about the nostalgic song was, was like important because that was actually the hardest one because there were so many pieces and looking at the way you described it, like the pieces of like your past or childhood or memories or, or anything it really could be. So um, that was difficult because there's so many things that I could pick from the very musical past that I have. Um, so the other two came to me almost immediately, <laughs> um, but it was the nostalgia one um, that was a little bit tough. So I wound up picking a song that I think, cause I wanted one of them to be a female uh, artist And I wound up picking a song that I think encapsulates the way I remember myself as like a middle school student um, and how I wanted to be just like the female guitar players that I uh, that I admired. Well, this is definitely a shout out to a female empowerment experience and also a movie about female empowerment in a lot of ways, because this is part of this was a single but also part of the original movie soundtrack for reality bites Mm -hmm. which is a a fantastic movie i don't know if you've seen it um it's after school so it probably wouldn't have been possible for your show but it was certainly something that i loved showing my eldest child and and this song does say a lot about things going on in the movie but what does it say about you um, I'm not sure if the actual, this was the hard part of the picking these songs. Cause I don't know if the song itself lyrics say anything really about me, but it says that, um, especially at that time, if I think of myself as a, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, um, you know, listening to a strong female voice, um, who, who was into, to me, that was, it was an independent person and an independent woman. It was like encapsulated all of the things that I thought that I could do or pictured myself as when I was an adult. Um, and, and I would create a life that I thought that she was living on her own. And, and that was what I like women like that was what I imagined I could be like. And so that's what I think of when I think of that song, memorizing the words and singing into the mirror and pretending that I am that person. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> okay, well, here's Lisa Loeb in Nine Stories with Stay. Time 
picturing yourself in middle school right now? Oh, yeah. I'm looking into my other monitor, right? I have a separate screen over here that's not on, so I can just see my reflection in it. I'm pretending it's a mirror. <laughs> and just singing into it. it helps that there's a microphone in front of me, like a real one. <laughs> not the marker or pen or whatever you yeah, got. Yeah, this is yeah. exactly what I do on the dock every Saturday night. I'm just singing <laughs> into my microphone. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, songs like that, they stay with you. And even Mm -hmm. though they remind you of a time in your past, you know, hearing it now, it must bring you not just to where you were, but in many ways where you are. Mm -hmm. And I also think of that album. I don't know how much you would know that whole album, but that's the single everybody can remember from that time. But if that, that entire, the reason I chose that song instead of so many other things that I could have picked from different parts of my childhood or adolescence um, was not only because I think of myself in middle school and, 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 you know, how I was at that moment, but that entire album itself, I still will pull up um, and listen to in its entirety. And it's at that time, like people didn't listen to albums in their entirety. And, you know, it was like, uh, it's at least for me when you're a kid you pick out the singles and that's what you listen to but i just remember every song on there was so weird and different and um and just i couldn't believe that i don't know like there weren't a lot of other women that you knew that had an album that was powerful like that uh and i think that she was an underrated an underrated talent of the time that i like to still still push everybody listen to lisa Loeb and nine stories tales <laughs> Awesome. So when you were thinking about that song that reflects your identity and telling your story, there's a lot in this next song. Um, Similar themes in terms of like a transformation, but also, you know, a lot of depth and a lot of um, metaphor. What do you see about yourself in this next song that you call your identity song? Man. So of, of the three, that song came to me first. Um, and like even you just mentioning it and bringing it up, I get like almost chills because mm-hmm. it's like, I mean, you said it is a transformation song and it's a little weird and I don't think many people know it, but um, a lot of things about me and this, this kind of really bridges like me now and me as a kid, but like loving to just the surface level going into the woods and disappearing and, 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 uh, hiking for, you know, six miles around the lake or, um, you know, now it's like taking my dogs into the California Hills and, um, hiking for half a day until we can't stand the sun or heat anymore. (laughs) And, uh, and just the idea of being deep in the wild and, um, shedding the part of you that people expect stuff from you and becoming like one with something greater and more powerful. But there's another narrative in that, in the song. It's not just about, um, nature or, or, you know, the woods or, or something or escape. It's, it's about really becoming like who you like deeply who you were meant to be. Uh, and I don't know another song like that. And it, and it's when I, when I play this for people there, when I played this for, for Stephen Hurley for the first time, he was like, what is, this is the song you picked? And he's like, this is really, this is kind of dark. I'm like, it's not dark. It's empowering. And I think that's a big part of me is often I see things that are a little bit darker to be empowering and freeing and transformative. And I think that's what this song shows. Okay, well, we have to play it. So here is Fur by Blitz and Trapper. Yeah, when I was only 17 I could hear the angels whispering So I drove into the woods and wandered aimlessly about Till I heard my mother shouting through the fog It turned out to be the howling of a dog Or a wolf to be exact The sound sent shivers down my back But I was drawn into the pack And before long They allowed me to join in and sing their song so from the cliffs and highest still, yeah, we would gladly get our fill 
howling endlessly and shrilly at the dawn. And I lost the taste for judging right from wrong. For my flesh had turned to fur, yeah, and my thoughts they surely were turned to instinct and obedience to God. You better be sure if you're making God a liar. I'm a rattlesnake, babe. I'm like fuel on fire. So if you're gonna get me, don't be afraid of what you learn. On the day that I turn 20. Um. When I hear that song, I think about life cycle, and I think about you know the evolution. Um, of this, you know, child in the pack and then this hedonistic kind of pursuit and then, you know, kind of finding yourself and, and shedding that until you feel comfortable in your own skin or, or fur, if you, what have you. Wow, that was beautiful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it, must, it must relate to you also because moving coasts essentially is a, is a really life-changing thing. And you've only been there for three years, but you must have really wanted to be there and change change your fur. Oh my gosh. I've gone through, I, and what I was going to say is um, even just listening to even that little piece there of that song, like I'm a big believer in letting um, the cycles of life and the world like change and shape you and transform you. Um, and whether that's, you know, as simple as the little story that's being told in the song, um, where it's like the actual cycle of life and, and maturing and realizing what it is that you want, which if you're not hearing the end of the song there, but the, my favorite lyric in that song is where he just decides he just wants to have a little space in the woods, like a little cabin. I just always have this image in my head, a little cabin, meet someone that he can share that home with and raise, and the line is, raise our children up as gently as can be. And it's so simple and beautiful. And it takes this whole powerful idea of being able to transform and become uh, the next, the next part of yourself that you're able that that you're meant to be. Um, But it but boils down the purpose to this simple, like moment of happiness. Um, And I love that. And I think that, that that's something that I believe in the power to make changes at any point in life. Um, It's not it's super hard to leave education uh, after 14 years uh, when you never had another job except for working in a school. So Mm -hmm. all of that plays into, um, you know, doing a lot of work to accept other changes as they come, whether they're impersonal or professional, you know, they, you have to, you have to really kind of train yourself to accept that your, your skin might turn to fur and that you should embrace that. And I think that that's a big part of who I am today. That's so cool. Um, The last song has many descriptors. I call it a pick me up, inspirational, pump you up, motivational. Which is this for you? How would you describe this last song? This is probably even darker than the song we just played, Um, (laughs) (laughs) which is why after I picked these two, I was like, well, my nostalgic song has to be a little bit light and I have to get a female in there. And um, so, so this song is by a band that um, all, they're very known for slice of life, like very detailed writing about everyday stuff. Um, and it's almost like someone's just talking to you about their day, only they've, they're they singing about it. Uh, so this song has a beat and a simple chorus and, and message that is going to be easy for people to understand and pick up on um, as far as it being like a, a way to to pump you up to kind of take over the day or take over the world type of thing. But I will put this on when you hear the story in between that, um, this it's kind of, there's a lot of depressing stuff in there (laughs) and the person is like going through things that are not, not great, but they're getting through it. And I like the idea of not always needing to feel super happy, but you will make it through 
anyway. Like we don't have to be super happy all the time, but we can, we all have all of these things, these, these transformations, if you will, that we have to go through from day to day, from week to week and so on. And, um, I think it's important to realize that, that it will be okay. Uh, and this song I would put on at any time from just waking up in the morning and not feeling like I want to be up in the morning, it works. And it also works when you're, and it also works when you're driving in the car, which is how this song begins. Okay. It's also really good for the Good Riddance 2020 playlist yes. that it showed up on a lot. So let's listen to it. This is This Year by the Mountain Goats. <laughs> appreciate what you were saying before about you know not glossing over with sunshine and roses the realities of life Mm -hmm. and sometimes just calling it for what it is like this is a tough time (laughs) this is a unique circumstance things are hard sometimes and it's not going to kill me you know we can do hard things yeah exactly and I love that especially like since my like transformation in the last three years, which I think never stops, like you're constantly remaking yourself. That's been the most helpful to me is not expecting the best from yourself all of the time. Um, And a song like that, if when you listen to the whole thing through, like he's, he's, he's making it through, but uh, he might be drunk sometimes. He might, (laughs) he might, he might be driving around to his, you know, stepfather's house who's disappointed in him. There's disappointment. And, um, but it's okay because tomorrow you get to take a new deep breath and try again. And that, that those things are more hopeful to me than just, um, than just always pretending that everything is sunshine. I think that's really important. But I'm feeling kind of sunshiny about listening to you and getting to know you. So how are you <laughs> feeling about your three songs? Um, I actually think that they do represent a nice slice of of who I am, I think. And it's hard to pick. I'm sure everybody has a hard time picking just three songs that encapsulate their entire being or life, <laughs> <laughs> especially to me, picking one from childhood. But um, I think... A, I think they really do represent a prism of who I am right now. Yeah. And it's a snapshot for right now, but I'm glad it feels good. Mm -hmm. Let's send people to where they can find you. Um, Well, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Scandala9. So S Candela9. It was a nickname given to me by one of my students a long time ago. It's a good nickname. I I love it. (laughs) Because as a teacher, my name, my email was, you know, my first initial and then my last name. So the kids would email me and they would call me Scandala. <laughs> um, so that's my my Twitter and Instagram handle are Scandala and then the number nine. Um, and you can follow the Doc Radio at, on Twitter and Instagram as well. 
Yes, and you can listen live on Saturday nights. On Saturday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. On voiceed.ca. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so happy I got to spend this time with you. Is there anything you want to add before I play you out? Um, no, I just think that this is a great product, product, project. <laughs> and um, I'm so glad that I got this opportunity because I've wanted to speak to you as well. So thank you for um, c- for connecting with me. And thank you to Stephen Hurley for connecting everybody. <laughs> yes, the pod father himself. It's, it's an amazing thing that he can sense the synergies even before you've had the chance to make the connections. Yes. And I'm forever grateful for that man. And I'm so happy. And hopefully this is not the only time you and I will get to have some hang time. Yeah. I second that. I agree. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Thank you for joining us on the P3, the personal playlist podcast. I'm Noah Daniel. This is Voice Ed Radio. And I hope you have a fantastic day. 